Hi, good morning. I know I'm on here early. I don't know if anyone's even up to join me, but I have my... be wondering where in the world is Laura right now. I'm up, I'm awake early to go to an appointment here in a few minutes. And so, um, yeah, I wanted to get started early so that I didn't have to try to do it before work later. And so I love you guys. I'm glad I can at least bring the word for you to look at later, to, to listen to. Um, we have been having such good prayer times uh, at night at 7 p.m. We've been praying for the sick. Anyone who wants to jump on, who wants prayer for whatever they're going through in their body, um, we are so on it for this whole week. We'll be doing it every night through Saturday. So tonight's Tuesday, we'll be hitting it again, and we love to see what God's doing. And, um, yeah, I just want to invite you. Today we're in um, the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, and we're going to be reading through verses 1 through 9. So let's get started here. Alrighty. Now everyone at that time spoke a single language with one vocabulary. As people migrated eastward, they found a large plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let's unite together and make bricks of clay and burn them until they become hard. So they piled up the bricks they made to serve as stones and collected tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's begin work to build ourselves a city with a lofty tower that rises into the heavens. We'll make a name for ourselves a monument to us instead of being scattered all over the earth. But when Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had started building, he said, If they have begun this as one people sharing a common language, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language and prevent them from understanding each other. So Yahweh scattered them over the entire earth and they stopped building their city. This is why the city was called Babel because it was there that Yahweh confused the language of the whole world. And from there, the people were scattered over the face of the earth. How many of you have heard this story before, the Tower of Babel? I know that was something that was common to um, have Bible stories in Sunday school growing up and to learn how different languages originated. Um, it actually came out of something sinful, I guess. <laughs> so um, that's interesting to think about for a minute. Um, the Bible does, well, I don't want to jump around. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. I have a few different thoughts, but I'll try to be uh, line upon line here. So, um, just one, um, one little thing that the author Brian Simmons brings out in the notes is that when man builds things, um, and builds them from bricks in the Bible. That's not the way God builds things. Not the, it's not the materials he uses. He uses stone. And he uses stone like rocks, but he also uses precious stones to build things that are beautiful and precious and more ornate, both in this um, time and in the time to come when he will build the new Jerusalem. So... Um, the, the things that stuck out to me here, um, was, well, it's kind of obvious that these scriptures, um, I don't know what happened to everybody all of a sudden, they got a bee in their bonnet or something, <laughs> but, um, just 
they came to the decision that they wanted to make a name for themselves um, and they wanted to make a monument to themselves. And so, of course, you know, I'm sure as with what happened with me when I was reading this, you might be thinking that happens a lot in our time as well now with people becoming rich and famous. The whole idea behind becoming famous and the reason people want to be famous is this, this these scriptures right here, making a name for themselves and building monuments to themselves. There's something um, in our flesh and in our human sinful condition that wants to turn away from exalting God's name and heralding him and bringing him to be the forefront and the one to be worshiped and to turn it all towards ourselves. And um, we just need deliverance from this because we all have a tendency to want to do this. Now, we also know because of revelation and grace that God has poured out on us and on the church that we are sons and daughters and that we have authority in the earth and that we are clothed in his righteousness and we have an eternal covenant with him that does make us special, that we are special to him. But um, there's a difference between <clears throat> heralding ourselves and making ourselves and our names great apart from him too, that uh, we see in the world with the entertainment industry and other things like that where people um, leave God out and just decide that they want to be famous. Um, now, some people want to be famous and earn or make a lot of money because they do have a heart for the world and they do want to change um, things in the world and they are um, using their monies for good things and i think that's wonderful but it would be it would be eternal it would count for eternity and it would be um i don't know what else the word is of eternal value if they would put god on it if they would seek him first about their plans and so that's all this is teaching here is that we don't leave God out. We don't build um, something without his instruction. I mean, this is so contrary to the way that Noah operated in his life. You know, just taking the, the instructions of God and just, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, every single piece of the ark being put together, as he said. And um, yeah, so, and then it says Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower that the mortals had started building. Now, that sounds kind of funny, like all of a sudden he woke up and was like, what's going on down there? But that really isn't how it is with God. I have the thought in my mind when I read this that he knew all along what they were doing. Um, he just has mercy. He just waits. He's not late. He, he isn't willing that anyone should perish. He's waiting for people to turn around and to turn towards him and to change their minds and turn away from evil and turn to him. So I think he was letting them build and letting them start their ambitions that were without him. And then he had to put a stop to it. And it wasn't because um, it says um, nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. It isn't because God didn't want them to be able to succeed or do things well. He does. He wants to breathe life into every one of the ideas and the plans and the um, projects and things that he, he has for us to accomplish in our life. It wasn't that, it was that he knew that the plans were sparked from a wrong place, a without God place, and an exalt man place in their hearts. And so he knew that it would just run amok in the whole system and the whole world as it was then. 
And so again, in his mercy, like when he, when he sent the floodwaters, he did this, I believe, um, to keep um, a one, uh, one language people from being able to spread um, a without God society and not looking up to God and making him famous type of society. And so he wanted to stop that so that there would be um, the leaning in upon him and the, the going after him and letting him pursue us. I mean, having that relationship with him. So um, he said, come let us, excuse me, come let us go down and confuse their language preventing them from understanding each other. Excuse me. And us is a referral to the Trinity, which is so beautiful again here to see that he's using, you know, the word Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come let us go down as one unit, all of, all three of us, and confuse their language and prevent them from understanding each other. So how they did this I don't know, but this is an example of God lovingly setting boundaries again. Do you know he does? He sets boundaries so that we won't be hurt or hurt one another. And um, it sounds like he's being cruel or punishing or cutting off their creativity. There's so many ways that you can look at this apart from what a, an understanding of a loving father is going to be like <clears throat> for his children. But that's not what it is. It's a it's a boundary that's being set that they tried to break through and we're trying to, you know, he just he steps in when we try to live life without him. He's so merciful. And that's what we want to pray for people that we know who have blocked him out and shut him out is that he'll step in and bring them back to the recognition of him and who he, he wants to be the center. He wants to be the focal point. He wants to be the one who on the high tower is the name Yahweh, not me and you. <laughs> um, even in our hearts, even if it's not outward on some big billboard, even if it's not, um, you know, really plain to see in people's empires that they've built for themselves. Um, so... He scattered them through the entire earth and they stopped building their city. And that's why it's called Babel, 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 Babel. <laughs> um, because it was there that Yahweh confused the language of the whole people. One day there's going to be a language that is clarified and unified that God speaks about in Zephaniah 3, 9 and Acts 2, will be, which will be the reversal of Babel, where we'll all speak the same language. That will be beautiful. I'm, I'm sure it will be a beautiful, melodious language that he will give us. And um, it's some linguists say that there's nearly 7,000 languages in the earth today. Can you imagine that? Wow, the dialects and the languages. It's amazing. Um, so we just want to see the name of Jesus exalted, and we don't want to make a name for ourselves. That's what we learn from the text today. Making a name for yourself apart from um, being partnered with God is not a great idea, but a great idea if God should give you a name that is known by others in the, in the world, that you be linked with him. That when they say your name or the name of your corporation or your organization, hi, Gail, that they link it automatically with God and with who he is and his character. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. Um, tomorrow we'll be back in um, chapter 11, probably. I'm not sure we'll finish chapter 11. There's two more important parts in there, so we might take them one at a time. I wish you a very blessed Tuesday and have a great day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me, whether it's now or later. And I'll see you tonight to pray for the sick and pray for healing and miracles at 7 o'clock. All right? Have a great morning. Bye-bye.